I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We are live in Las Vegas. Wait, they say what happens here stays here, but since I've been doing this new television series on the Travel Channel called Vegas Trip, we're trying to uncover everything in Vegas. And we're with David Asprey, or Dave, as his friends and family call him, who is an amazing... Some people would call you a geek. Yeah, I've been accused of that more than once. So tell me about your geekdom. Well, I'm a VP of cloud security at Trend Micro, and it turns out I've been for almost the last 20 years involved with cloud, the very early days of cloud. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, there are a lot of people here today thinking what happens when their content goes up into the cloud. So I thought maybe today we could chat about that. Well, it's interesting because most people around the planet drop stuff when we're recording, um, and most people around the planet are using clouds and have no concept of what they are, or gosh, when I'm watching my favorite concert, on my app through Google or my iPad or watching it on my computer at home, you're actually behind everything they're getting. It's true. The cloud is now what powers all of your mobile devices. So the idea that it's on your iPhone is sort of kind of true. We might have downloaded your video or your audio down to the iPhone, but it was sitting somewhere in the cloud before it even got there. So people in our business, in the media business, will think of the cloud as, oh, it's on iPhones, it's on PCs and all. But that's kind of a very advanced picture of the cloud because really the cloud is a bunch of centralized data centers where you might upload terabytes and terabytes of your video and then distribute it carefully to, to end devices. So we're looking at the whole security story there that says how do we secure that end device? How do we make sure that your core content that you've put in the cloud doesn't get polluted or changed or just lost? So different from a um, Norton or a, Kapers a Kapersky or um, McAfee or other firewalls, if you will, even Windows, you provide a higher level of encryption to hopefully secure people's money, their technology, and their intellectual property. We do. And what we found is that media companies have enormous requirements for storage and for compute power in the cloud. So what they're doing is they're uploading their core intellectual property you know, by the terabyte up into the cloud. And then oftentimes it's not that well protected. So what we do is we add a layer of encryption on top of it to protect it so that no server can ever talk to your important intellectual property until we basically certify that that server is who it says it is. And that's one of the fundamental cloud problems. You don't know if anyone is who they say they are with the cloud. Well, we make sure that servers are who they say they are and even people are who they say they are before they can get to what you've put up there. I don't, but hypothetically, say I'm from the company Dewey, Cheatham and Howe, and I've decided that I like your bank account and I like the stuff you're downloading by Pick a Band uh, or a film that's really hot right now, and so I'm going to bootleg your stream so I can resell it. What happens? It turns out that cyber criminals are even sneakier than that. They might bootleg the stream, but they also might put malware up there at the same time. So what you'll do is, you'll oh look, there's a fan page. It's not the official one, but it looks pretty official. So what they'll do then is you'll, you'll, you'll stream your stolen content at the same time. They're putting software on your computer that steals your password, steals your bank account info, and then they'll log into your Bank of America or whatever else account, and they'll download, download they'll wire transfer the money out of your account. If you're a small business, and a lot of the people in our industry are small businesses. Mm -hmm. You're not protected by the government even. So if it's excuse a, me, if it's a personal account and someone steals your money, you get it back from the bank. If you're a business and someone uses your password to steal your money, you're SOL. Just like that. I, you're seriously right. Yeah. So it's a real problem. What we do then as a company at Trend Micro is we look at how do we protect all these devices that are connecting to the cloud and then how do we con protect your core data that's in the cloud. So when you're done, you know that your iPhone, your iPad, your PC is fully protected and your intellectual property in the cloud is fully protected because it's encrypted. That way, no matter which side of the equation you're on, you always know that what's yours is yours and what someone wants to get they need to legally purchase from you. So your company would work with governments, um, Fortune 500 companies, um, charities, private organizations. Um, would, do you even work with smaller companies? We work enormously with small and medium-sized businesses. So we actually enable small and medium-sized businesses to share files, even large files, using our SafeSync service. So you can sync your files up with our encrypted storage in the cloud, and then you can, say, maybe enable access to those for editing from other people on your team. So I occasionally do podcasts for what I do at Trend Micro and Head of Global Evangelism. And 
Well, in order for me to share that with someone in India or someone across the country, I upload it to our service that's in the cloud, and then I let someone else do it. Right. But if I was going to do multiple terabytes, I might upload that to Amazon Web Services. I might upload that to one of the other very large sort of industrial-grade storage things that are in the cloud, but then I wouldn't have the security that I wanted. So my company would provide the security there on top of that. So you could be, um, through you and Amazon services collectively or individually, you could be the FTP center where I could upload to Sony Television, to Pix in India, who I do daily, um, 10, 10 gig today, um, which was today's shipment, um, send up 10 gigs and give it a secure fingerprint that it actually originated from one of my laptops so they're not getting stuff that are hidden viruses or whatever in those um, files that are coming to them, as well as... Um, do it on an economical basis so it's cost effective? We can make it cost effective and there's some sneaky stuff going on in here too that, that people don't know about. Cyber criminals have really made this into a, a, a real business where they have metrics and they treat it just like someone selling ads on the internet now. So what they'll do is they'll infect a file and put it in a cloud storage. They'll also send you an email with a link to that file mm -hmm. and they'll infect a website and then they'll send you an email. If you click on the link you get infected. If you download the file you get infected. So what what we're doing is we're correlating those threats to say, ah, that email is infected, that link is infected, and that file is infected, or maybe just one of them. Right. So solving that problem goes a long way towards making sure that you can economically share that data that's up in the cloud. How can I prevent someone from phishing? You know, having software like the Trend Micro suite on your machine will do that. What you might not know when you install this is that you are connecting as part of an immune system with almost 100 million other computers that are hooked up. Every time someone goes to a new URL, we have data centers surrounded by 50,000 servers that search and look and say, is this a phishing site or is this not a phishing site? And we offer real-time blocking inside the browser. So if you're doing banking or you're dealing with your own intellectual property and you're moving around the internet and you're not protecting yourself, even on your iPhone or even on your Mac. You know, Macs are real popular in the media business, but Macs have vulnerabilities just like PCs do. They're more recently being exploited. So you've got to protect yourself locally because why worry about cloud security if your own machine is already the vulnerability that got your bank account taken and got what you put up into the cloud exposed for other people to download. And now you're the person who put up the entertainment they wanted to see and gave away everybody's bank account. People aren't going to really like going back to your fan site anymore. Um, can I layer your technology, say, if I'm doing an entertainment site, which I do, and I'm doing streaming, can I layer your technology on top of someone else like uh, Norton or some of these others, or are there going to be conflicts like there are when you have competing programs? There would be performance issues because the Norton things, especially when you're dealing with virtualization, which most cloud is based on virtualization now, when you do that, you get very poor performance. What we do, though, is we have a special deal with VMware, the largest provider of virtualization. So you get about 20 times better performance when you do it with uh, virtualization aware security. So if you're a small business, that probably doesn't make a big difference simply because you're not going to be dealing with it at that layer. But if you're dealing with multiple terabytes and you're uploading these things and you're doing image processing or video crunching and rendering in the cloud, you are dealing with this on a daily basis. And we can save you a lot of money by just being more efficient about security. So you can actually, um, I'm guessing, um, and, and tell me, uh, if you can, um, you can actually put a digital encryption fingerprint to see where it's coming from, where it's going to, and maybe who put their hands on it, who shouldn't have? We don't do the watermarking thing, okay. which is another part of security, sort of the content protection side of things. Mm -hmm. There are definitely companies, companies here, who do a really good job of watermarking. So if it's a, a PDF or a video, say a video file, and you're concerned someone's going to download it, then you want to watermark that. But what we'll do is we'll make sure that no one stole that file originally from your cloud and then distributed it for free. And that becomes a real problem, you know, with pre-release things where, oh, I was, I was going to launch this next week, but I'm sorry, it already got launched and it's not even all the way rendered. You know, we, we saw that with X-Men a while back where it was very widely viewed on BitTorrent. So wow. preventing those kind of leaks, even with something called data loss prevention, we have that. We can actually let you set a rule that says anyone working at my company may not upload this kind of content except to this location, which we know is secure because we encrypted it. Or may not download certain stuff onto my computers because it could have malware yes. or spyware. I've had that actually happen recently where someone who was doing work for me downloaded something that was a cool app, they thought, so in their break time they could be 
um, entertaining themselves. Right. What they did was entertain my hard drive to fry this past week and my motherboard to burn up because somebody put on the right type of technology that can do that. That's that's terrible. It's pretty unusual for the hardware itself to get broken, but there are some things that, that dig in at a very low level that can cause overheating and things. It becomes something that most people don't think about, but if you have hundreds of hours of recording time and editing time, and this is you know, the copy you're working on, maybe you have it backed up from yesterday, maybe you don't, you, you ought to, but you can lose an enormous amount of hours of work if you're not running the appropriate security. So it's not about just being safe, it's about actually getting your job done. If your well, machine goes down, you're screwed. Yeah, and, and following that same thought, if you're doing your daily backups, if you don't have the right security in the first place, you may be backing up malware and viruses that somebody helped mm -hmm. donate to your collection, yes. and it keeps going with each master rendering. It does not go away with a new version. It doesn't go away. In fact, we see all the time companies who reinfect themselves mm -hmm. after they restore from a backup. So that, that's a major issue. The other thing is, what if your backups that you didn't encrypt using a, a properly secured key, what if someone gets a hold of one of those? They just got your work. So walking out with a tape still happens. People still do tape backup. Now a lot of people back up to the cloud. So they're working locally, but they keep copying up to the cloud, which is a very elegant sort of real-time approach, one that I would actually recommend. The problem there, though, is if the thing you're putting up into the cloud isn't properly protected, you if someone had a little bit of malware on your machine, even if they saw your password one time, they may be logging in and downloading all that stuff from the cloud just as fast as you're putting it up. Now all of that content you worked so hard to create is now available for someone else to monetize without you getting paid. Hold it, you mean somebody can actually see my keystrokes when I'm doing something and mirror a copy of my email so when I get something they can read it too? Of they, course. They, they can, but a lot of people don't think about it. In fact, one of the emerging problems is criminals are actually mounting video cameras. They're so small, these little surveillance things now. Uh, you know, right out of paparazzi land, I guess. But they, they put them in places where people use their laptops a lot. You can see on the screen what someone's username is and you can see their fingers. They do it for ATM keypads too. Right. So I advise people to definitely be careful if you're in public and you're typing a password for your core site, you know, protect it a little bit. Make sure there's no one shoulder surfing. That's what you know, hackers call it. On a, on a, on a more simplistic level, um, mirroring what you just said, you could have someone with that malware put in a type of log, a log me in technology mm. where I can literally be sitting in Miami and watching your every keystroke in Los Angeles because yes. um, I have my network set up that way when people are working on my networks I want to know what's going on I own the company um, but hackers have that same ability yes. with their spyware technology it, it gets even worse not only will they watch your screen as you're typing the, at the same time they'll tell your computer to send spam to other people using your address book to get them infected and they might even be running a denial of service campaign so they can take over your computer completely and you won't know it and that becomes pretty scary just because you know we all like to be you know good good citizens of the world and if every time you turn your computer on you're sending out spam that's getting other people infected you're not helping we found networks of millions of computers controlled by one criminal Wow, and it doesn't necessarily have to be people in your address book. They can be using your address to originate spam to hundreds of millions of people around the planet because they have the list of people they want to hack. They can indeed, but the best spam attack is one where it comes from you to me because I'm in your address book. So, oh, I'm going to open it because you're a friend, and that's right. a good way to get past these phishing attacks. And that's why you know it's, it's very hard for people to avoid just using their mind to avoid spam because, or to avoid malware and phishing. You just don't know. But if you have software running, it'll say, warning, warning, that link that was in your that email from the friend, the guy you know, that link was actually going to an infected site. Don't click on it, and it'll actually disable the link for you. That's one of the things that the Trend Micro software does. Well, what's interesting is if you go into a store in most places around the world and you take a loaf of bread without paying for it, you're stealing. Yes. Most people have the concept, and I know this from talking to people around the planet, oh, well, I downloaded the music, but I only play it at home. Um, that it's okay to take other people's intellectual property. And at this convention alone, there's about $20 billion worth of recorded business we know about. Wow. If you take the record industry and the film industry and the television industry, it's staggering well beyond that number. Those are recorded numbers based on what we can actually account for. Mm -hmm. The hidden accounting is probably two to three times that, I'm guessing. It would not surprise me at all. And, and that's why there's so much pressure to steal files from the cloud, uh, especially ones that are hot and new. Right. 
So um, I look forward to seeing more of your future developments because you um, are definitely on the cutting edge, not the bleeding edge of technology. Thank you, Kurt. It was really a pleasure talking today. Thank you. Now, can I get you to do like just um, a quick couple of hi, your name, your company, you're sure. here at NAB, and you're watching Actors Reporter with Kurt Kelly or something. And I'm like watching that. it, okay. Or, well, you're telling the viewer, uh, okay, you're watching, or stay tuned for more, whatever. Okay. The ad lib Stay tuned guy. for more of Actors Reporter, Reporter with, with Kurt Kelly, with Kurt at Kelly. NAB 2012. Live video ink completely ad lib it. You Live know, video ink or Kevin? Could, uh, both. Yeah, both, but right. what you can do is a little cheap. Sweet. Is just kind of hold that with your thumb there. You're the man. Live video ink, Kevin Kelly. All right. No, it'd be Kurt though. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin Kelly's a head editor at Wired Magazine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not even I'm, related. I'm friends with him too, so. All right, tell him I said hi. <laughs>